Good afternoon, everyone. We're going to get started. We're about two minutes after four, and we got a kind of a packed presentation here today. Uh, you're sitting in our right to repair uh, presentation with us today. Uh, I'm Gary Mankey. I'm with the Midwest Equipment Dealers Association. We represent the agricultural dealers in the uh, state of Maryland. And with us today, we also have all the OEMs on the board, John Deere, Case IH, Kubota, and New Holland, and ACO. And throughout the course of this presentation, basically, there will be ex explanation on right to repair. Randy, you want to hit the next slide for me, please? And I'm not going to spend much time up here because these are the guys you want to talk to. And basically, we've always supported right to repair by the customers of our dealers who sell equipment to you out there in the field. And basically, uh, we've always had access to the repair information, ability repair, where we have issues is we the access the embedded code and the problems that uh, projects out there to not only you, but also to our suppliers, the OEM. And with that said, I'm going to turn it over to Brandon. All right. Um, good afternoon. My name is Brandon Gallion. I'm a John Deere Territory Customer Support Manager. Um, I support John Deere dealers in Maryland, Delaware, and uh, Southern Pennsylvania. And uh, I'll let Kevin introduce himself real quick. Come on in. I'm Kevin Dinsmore. I'm the Integrated Solutions Manager, Technology Manager at Atlantic Tractor here in Maryland and Delaware. Can you all hear me still? Hopefully. Okay. So um, we've heard from our customers that they want the ability to quickly diagnose and repair their equipment. Um, it's in our best interest to reduce their downtime and maximize productivity because this is what drives their purchasing decisions. We've invested heavily in technology to maximize productivity, and we want customers to get as much out of their equipment as possible. Um, here's a quick list of some of the resources available and where to find it. So John Deere, we heavily use our public website to direct access to resources such as operators manuals, parts catalogs, and also to purchase diagnostic and repair tech manuals. The, uh, the advancements of machine interfaces and diagnostic displays, many of the diagnostic trouble codes or DTCs experienced by customers are already displayed to machine operators on screen and they're available through machine apps. So I'm gonna hand it over to Kevin for him to walk through um, some of these tools that are available. Um, and uh, All right, good afternoon. So, how many of you have been downstairs into our booth down in the corner of the exhibit hall? So we are here. I'm supporting Atlantic Tractor slash John Deere. We've got Agco represented, Kubota, Case, and John Deere all collectively together to support the right to repair. Issue with inside of Maryland and the legislature and the Farm Bureau. So we are going to go through the slides of John Deere, but each one of these manufacturers are working down a path of the same thing as John Deere, headed for information tools, electronic diagnostics, books, CDs, to support right to repair. So the next few slides are Deere, but it is all of the manufacturers. We are all here together at the same booths supporting this, our discussion on right to repair. Yeah. So let's start here. This is John Deere, this is where your portal is as a customer to get into Deere. It's financial information, your machines, JD Link. Um, this is where you sign in. It's a free access. You, you can sign up, you can connect your machines. It's where you can go to get parts if you see the top line. Stellar support is where software you can download on a stick for your machine. Um, globe and screen. The second line there is JD Link. 
and the operations center, which is our cloud-based data system. The third line there is John Deere University on the left. John Deere University is what we use as a dealer for training. There is also customer classes that are available on John Deere University in this whole piece of right to repair and training you on your equipment and training you on diagnostics. As we go across there to service advisor, service advisors are electronic tool for diagnosis and repair and manuals on a laptop that connects to a machine. That is also available in a customer version and we're gonna cover that. And that's, that's really the key pieces on this we're going to, and we're going to go into a couple of those and just show a couple of examples and talk about them. So here's JD link. It's really the telematics tool. So you can see where your equipment is. There is also the ability when codes are, I guess, thrown on your equipment that you can get an email or a text for when you set that up by pin under my John Deere account. So you can get it, have an operator and then an owner or a service manager on your farm that also will receive those codes. Next. So here we're back to my John Deere and we, I got a parts example. I didn't click it. So here's a parts example of a hitch. It's a 6125, 6150M, but it's the hitch. This is the exact same part system that we use at the dealer that the techs use to look up parts. It's tied into your My John Deere account for you to look up same parts based system that we use. You punch in a model number and go through and come through engine, transmission, cab, frame, body, hood that you see right there over on the right as the same tool we use at the dealer. All right, back to my John Deere. And then this is the opening page for our electronic tool. That's the customer version that we do sell to have a farmer or really DOT or large construction company to support their equipment with the same tool that we use as the dealer. The technicians carry around with their laptop to connect to a machine. It, it puts a 250 gigabyte file on your hard drive and you have access to most of the machines in the last 30 years in that file for tech manuals and diagnose, tech manual and repair, operator's manual, parts catalog that's all then linked. When you connect to the machine, it pulls the codes, the codes then pop up a link that takes you to the diagnostic steps it's the same diagnostic steps that our technicians use. And I will plug, we do have a green, small green tractor outside. After this meeting, we do have the tools. We can hook up to that and run through with a few people at a time. All I got is a laptop, but we can show you that process, unconnect a potentiometer down on the brake pedals and it'll throw a code and we can run through that diagnostics. So next slide. is so this is customer service advisor that let's start and we'll just run through those pictures the upper left is what i just showed you it's the opening page the the next box over there with the black box that says service advisor that is the data link that you have to purchase that connects between the laptop and the machine those other two boxes in the upper right are test codes and encoders that you can use it's a special tool that is available to the public to purchase the encoder and that flex probe kit that is called out into the diagnostics or in the repair manuals for the deer side. And you can purchase $2 special tools all the way through whatever we have access to to split a tractor in the splitting stands. Then those bottom two pictures without that camera view, but those are pictures of dealer events for clinics slash training events that, that we have held, those are not our pictures, but we have held as Atlantic Tractor the same kind of customer training events at locations. So that is really just a quick overview of customer service advisor for John Deere. 
what's available, what that kit looks like to get the connection, and it does need to be loaded on a laptop. All right, so here is the customer and the dealer capability of Service Advisor. You can access the owner and technical manuals like we've talked about, the lookup diagnostic codes in both dealer and customer capability, machine diagnose, diagnostic connectivity with the EDL that lets you hook to the machine and you get the one code or you get the 10 codes that are showing on the display or the corner post, depending on your tractor. This is backwards compatible, roughly 20 years of machines, uses the same EDL. Um, then we have perform machine calibrations that require the EDL. You can calibrate with your laptop, with the program and the EDL hook to that machine. And then access service advisor online. Yes, that's the resident version that's on your laptop. You can also access the online and the online version is under myjohndeer.com that I've shown you the boxes. You sign in with your own XID or own password and get into that. And then clear latched after treatment DTCs, yes. So you can, you can read the asterisk, but in general, you can clear those latched codes from DEF and that system with service advisor, customer service advisor. All right, next. One, one thing to add real quick, um, customer service advisor, when you do purchase that, there are different options. So you can get an ag and turf option or you could get a construction and forestry. Um, when you do purchase one of those options, if you get ag and turf, it's, you're not just getting for your machine, you're getting for all ag and turf equipment. So tractor, combines, planters, it's, it's open to everything when you, when you do purchase that. So it's a yearly fee that for the customer version is a yearly fee that you can load on four different computers and have access to four different XID numbers or logins. But yes, it is a yearly subscription. No, that is for four laptops. Four yeah, four different users, four different people on the farm, technicians, with, with your one farm purchase, it allows you four computers and four logins. So the cost to the, the farm would be the same if you have 10 combines? Correct. Any other questions? We might as well have a little conversation here then. How much is that subscription done? So it's roughly 20 24 2400 bucks is the cost there's a, a year plus there's a couple usb sticks you've got to buy that that load that program every year the blue tool if we back up a little bit is 1400 dollars, and i'll be honest that's what we pay from deer as a dealer I, I mean we pay for a yearly subscription for each one of our techs to have the tool because it's way cheaper and easier than manuals. And you got to have all that stuff when you're going out on service call for us. Yeah. What did you call the little box? It's called an EDL, an electronic data link. Does that answer your question? Yeah. All right. Any other questions on service advisor, customer service advisor? All right, then I'm, I'm going to move on. This is apps, and Deer has been integrating machines and apps. As you see up there, JD Link is an app. The Op Center is an app, which is the whole data piece going on for ag agronomy and fields and machines. They also have hay, planters, combines, and it walks you through steps on your combine to adjust like what you're seeing in the grain tank, what you're coming out of the back. It's kind of an interactive piece instead of the OM and reading through the processes in the OM. It's really the OM turned into an app that is a yes, no question, swipe right, swipe left to help you through that process to get a clean grain. 
sample. There's also the engine app that's up there in the top, top left or top right. And that's, I mean, you could see, there's a lot of apps because it, it really does make it almost everyone carries a phone and it's easy access to easy pieces that are in the operator's manual and helping you through, it'll do, if we go to the next slide, there's a code that, so there's the, the, the go, go chop, and then there's the combine in the areas that you have problems with harvest to get adjustments and get a clean grain. And then the one on the right is the Tractor Plus app that you can look up the 110 ECU engine coolant temperature extremely high, which can be debris in the front. It could be a sensor unplugged. It could be a chewed wire. It could be most of the time it's dirt and debris in the front that's throwing that code on a combine or a tractor doing tillage and stirring up a lot of a fodder in the field. Let's go to the next slide. So any questions on the apps? If not, I'm gonna dive into customer support or in, and connected support on service advisor remote. Who knows what service advisor remote is or have heard it from the dealer and so service advisor remote is service advisor that lets our techs another place than at your machine, dial into your machine with service advisor, pull codes, clear codes, send software, and do remote diagnostics. A lot of times they can do remote diagnostics, come with the right part, make that a one trip repair. And instead of a two trip repair of going, figuring out what the problem is and going back and getting the part and installing the part. So expert alerts is, yes. Do you need to have the other $24 for that for your that? No, we can do that to your machine as part of the purchase and part of us supporting you. There is an option. I mean, you can choose yes or no, but in general, we choose yes, because it helps us support your machine on service advisor remote. And then expert alerts is predictive diagnostics that Deere has done based on warranty claims, part failures, and certain codes that show up in a machine at certain times on helping stop downtime and making a repair before there is downtime or it is completely busted or broke. And then remote display access is using telematics to dial into your display. And usually you're talking on one of either, it, you can do it as the owner into your own machine. For us, it's usually, I got a problem with my display. Someone's calling the dealer. We remote display access in. We can see the screen, talk to you on the phone, and help people punch the bright buttons to make the right repair or turn the right thing off the right check mark in the box on or off. Yes. It is standard equipment on a machine that's telematically enabled. So you got to have the JD link controller and the MTG so that you can send wireless data back and forth or have that MTG turned on for JD Link. So it, in all new machines, it's coming standard. It is now free. It's been free since July. Deere has taken away the yearly cost of the cell phone connection at that $400, $500 a year. That has now been converted to $0. All of them have been turned on because there's benefit for the customer there's benefit for the dealer to help support the customer. So that cost has been removed. But 4G <clears throat> right now they're all 4G. 3G ends in 23 or 24 days here at the end of December. You've got to upgrade to a 4G controller for JD Link. We do not have 5G. 5G is really not available in the rural areas. It's really only available going down 95 and inside big cities. So that's connected support. 
that lets you and us use the telematics to help support machines and really uptime and control downtime. <coughs> All right, so this is our paper CD you can see up there. It's the Welcome to the Ag and Turf Bookstore in that black box. This is where, same place we go as a dealer, you can see across there for equipment publications, installation instructions, and edu education curriculum. But this is where you purchase. If we click the next slide, it shows the list. So this is where you can see those first three are oper operator's manuals that you can go to deer.com, click on parts and service, get to the bookstore, click on view, and you can get, really it's the table of contents that's linked that lets you open up all the sections in an OM. That's free, you can get to those. The bottom three that are down there is a preview, but there's a parts catalog, a diagnostic tech manual, and a repair tech manual. They are for purchase. You can purchase them on a CD. You can also purchase them. They're printed on demand right outside of Moline and get a tech manual that the same one that's in service advisor at the current production date, they, they print that book and you buy that book as the repair manual or the tech manual. Yeah. I've got kind of a leading question here. Um, you have to have that $2,400 advisor <coughs> plus the third advisor, and you have to have that $1,400 EL to repair and diagnose a tractor. No, you don't need it. it it's it's the top end tool to help with that, but you can do that with your knowledge, with what you know about engines, transmissions, or basic mechanical. Um, and you can use a paper copy that you've got or purchased and do those repair. It is not required. Does that answer your question? So you can, you can read the codes in the display and some of the newer equipment has help files that actually show the, that diagnostic trouble code and show you the machine picture, just like in the tech manual that that sensor is on the left side of the engine in the front and shows you a side view and a front view to help you find that sensor. Yes. So, uh, is there also a way to mirror the flash information or like the flash of the product so that you know it shows? Uh, so basically, you fix something, but there's still an error code. Uh, is there a way to clear that without? Most of them, yes. That is why it's on that list for the latch DTCs of after treatment. So, so if you got if you throw a code with an engine temperature sensor is high, and you change the sensor and rekey it, it does clear that code. Is is that what you were asking? It does. So the 9870 book, when I was an author for John Deere, is about this tall printed. But it goes through every one of those. So you can go yes or no and follow that diagnostic tree all the way through when you get in the right system to go through that. It is much easier with Service Advisor that you answer yes or no, and it's all linked through the computer. But the paper version works. Yes. Correct. The repair manuals and the diagnostic manuals are purchased.
They are all included in service advisor customer version. When you get um, turf and ag and turf, it's really the whole, almost a complete, at least to the last 30 years of machines, lawnmowers, gators, small compact tractors, all the way through combines. Yes. So on our 9870, we have not resolved that issue. It still has to be flashed by the dealer. So no, that, that issue is still a dealer only tool. So are we gonna make any progress over that? Cause there's a bill that's been put in already. Um, I can't answer that question. I'll just be completely honest. I'm not sure, I don't know. Any other questions? If not, I'm gonna to flip to the next slide and we're gonna keep going to get through our presentation. All right, so this is the same slide that Brandon started with is, as I went through most of these repair tools that are available for customers from Deere. And I'm not gonna read them, but the manuals and the product guides, I, I think I went through and hit every one of those. And those are the tools to go through customer do-it-yourself repair, right to repair from Deere, and it's very similar for the other manufacturers. All right, thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Um, so I'm gonna switch over to a little bit of uh, some John Deere technology and data security topics. Um, and then we're gonna allow the other OEMs to speak on their tools. So John Deere's technology vision is for John Deere ag customers to be the world's most profitable and sustainable farmers. Um, as we look through, uh, John Deere has evolved multiple times over our history, from mechanization to precision ag and connectivity, and now as we transition to autonomy. Uh, this evolution has been focused on making farmers more efficient and profitable. Connectivity has been a key driver in our recent evolution with remote machine monitoring, uh, many things that Kevin already spoke about, uh, remote display access, helping our farmers manage their machine fleet. Service advisor remote allows dealer personnel to remotely diagnose your equipment and expert alerts alert a dealer and a customer of a potential failure before it happens. Um, all of this reduces downtime for our customers. Within ag, additional customer priorities are developing. Equipment is getting bigger, faster, and stronger, while technology is getting easier, smarter, and more precise. These developments have led to more onboard diagnostics through your display in the cab, as well as equipment apps that, again, were already discussed. Um, as we say, technology and going into autonomy, so, so many of you may already heard, John Deere recently acquired Bear Flag Robotics. Bear Flag's a retrofitted autonomous solution with obvious synergy with John Deere's ex existing technology portfolio. Um, John Deere and Bear Flag will be working closely together to collaborate to deliver advanced technology solutions for farmers around the world. Now kind of going into the, uh, the data security here. So customers place a high value on their farm data um, and the security around it. At John Deere, we are focused on how we can provide customers, both farmers and ranchers with the control, transparency and value connected to their data. Deere has a large full-time um, staff dedicated to maintaining the security of farmers' data. This privacy and cybersecurity landscape is constantly changing. We have some of the best talent in the industry and work with the best third-party experts that audit our systems to help ensure we're keeping our customers' data secure. 
when you choose John Deere, you're always in control of your data and choose if or who you choose to share your data based on the permissions you set. John Deere received the American Farm Bureau Ag Data Transparent Certificate. Um, which verifies that our solutions are in compliance with core principles for ag data cons consent, ownership, and privacy. DEER has a large dedicated team that continually evaluates for security vulnerabilities. DEER's top priority is to remedy any vulnerabilities as soon as they are identified to ensure the privacy of our customers. DEER's approach to minimizing vulnerabilities focuses on building security into everything that we do, conducting routine testing to identify and fix vulnerabilities and segregating personal and sensitive data. So as I said, um, that was kind of, I guess, the, the, the deer portion and very similar with uh, what the other OEMs have. And so we're gonna allow Wayne from Case IH to share real quick on what they have available. Good afternoon, Wayne Power, Case IH uh, Field Service Manager. Uh, like, like the John Deere guy said, uh, we have everything available through the Case IH or the New Holland brand.com. Uh, if you need service manuals, uh, which are which are paid for, your parts manuals are available out there free. Um, as long as you go in and sign up to the mybrand.com, which is either my Case IH or my New Holland. So just, just like John Deere, um, the, customer, the customer electronic service tool is going to give you the ability to look at your controller status, um, some parameter monitoring, uh, fault code retrieval and clearing with the tool, uh, machine calibrations you'll be able to do with the customer EST, service manuals will be all available through the customer EST. And again, you can, you can buy that as a hard copy off of the one web, uh, website. Uh, you'll get your, you know, electrical and hydraulic schematics, fault code descriptions in the repair process, like the tree we were speaking about earlier to, to walk your way down through it. Um, disassembly and re reassembly instructions, uh, and then the computer and the data link um, information. So the ESP is the it's, it's, no, it's the electronic service, the customer electronic service tool. Um, so you'll have to have the software just like through, just like John Deere or Kubota or anybody else. You have to have the software loaded onto your computer. You'd have to have a data link. Uh, and the difference between, I guess, the way Case and, and New Holland's doing it and John Deere is, is we're going to, we're going to offer a basic and a premium. And that basic customer EST is per series per brand. So you could have a Magnum and and purchase the tool for the Magnum, which is, I think, about seven hundred bucks a year. And that's a data link. No, no, that's just the software. The data link is is in the fourteen to fifteen hundred dollar range too, just like the John Deere is. So you'd have to have your your basic or your premium license, which is a fee, seven hundred for the basic. I think it's twenty four for the premium. Then you'd have to buy your your data link also with that. Uh, so. In my case, we had a sensor go out in the exhaust, and it was something to do with efficient internal disassembly, which gradually disabled the tractor to the point that it wouldn't move. The dealer had to come in and they diagnosed it that it was a sensor, and then had to go get the sensor and come back and put it in, and then they had to calibrate or recalibrate the sensor or the right. monitoring system to that. Would that you would be? Yes. Yeah, you'd be able to go in and recalibrate it after you troubleshot it down to being that sensor and went and bought the sensor from the, you know, from the dealership and put it in. The EST, the customer EST is going to give you the ability to recalibrate or pair. That's annual subscription. Annual subscription. Uh, again, the difference, the only difference being is, is we offer per, per series versus buying the, the premium, which would cover all the products for that brand. So if you had combines and, and tractors and sprayers and multiples of them, it might be something you'd want to look at as far as a premium. Uh, but if not, if you only got the one off, then you would go to your, your basic customer EST. What about flash? No flashing. 
So on that flashing, I mean, the controllers are not what fail all the time though. Usually, you know, when you get a controller issue, from what I've seen, it's just my experience. It's not, it's not the controller that's failed all the time. It's either a, a bad wire somewhere, a push down and uh, something to that effect. So, I mean, are we really replacing controllers at an alarming rate? Yeah, and I don't, I don't know the percentage. I, yeah. yeah, you know, and just basing it off of experience, I mean, I don't, my territory is Southern Pennsylvania to, to South Carolina, and I just don't, I just don't see a whole lot of, you know, it doesn't happen. Yeah, it's going to happen. Does, does lightning hit the machines and destroy some of your controllers? Absolutely. Yeah, it's a short somewhere going to cause it. Yes, but it's, it usually comes down to a wiring problem. You know. My name is Marshall Cable. I'm chair of the field crops committee and district five director. And the reason I'm asking these questions is because most of the farmers that we represent are not going to purchase a customer service advisor or EST, but what a lot of them are asking for is alternative options for repair. Some of your larger farmers might. But what some smaller farmers have realized is that there is virtually no third party service for this equipment. And then it's limited by the fact that they have very repairability. Now, Kevin can mm -hmm. tell me that they can do 98% of it with uh, dealer service. Or Customer EST or dealer, yeah. But, um, you know, people aren't satisfied with that in condition. So that's kind of where we are, and that's why I'm asking the questions I'm asking. Unfortunately, I don't think this issue can be solved. So, um, yeah. Now, again, and I'm just, again, basing that off my experience, being around it, uh, you know, traveling through the dealers and seeing what the failures are. Just don't see a lot of controllers fail. And, and I think Kevin's right about fixing 98% of the issues uh, without, you know, without that customer. Yeah, Steve, you got a good technician and you know, electrics are electrics and hydraulics are hydraulics. And if long as you got a schematic and it shows you that tree to go down through, I think a good technician can progress his way down. But we're not, we're not gonna, we don't have the ability through the customer EST to do any software download on it. Three points you have your experience that happens on something that happens to corruption or confusion logic and removing operating software and reinstalling it or flashing it cures the problem. It happens. Yeah, yeah, I'll that. stand here and absolutely say it. Yeah. software does come and fix issues. We've probably all seen it. I mean, Tom looked up it. Downloaded software. I cannot explain or answer what happened to the previous software that was in that controller. But sometimes it, we do not disconnect wires. We do not repair wires. But software does fix the issue. It happens. I, I fully admit that that happens. Also, just to be clear, that two percent. That two percent of people just got to deal with it. These third party people that go out here and work on stuff. I mean, if they're going to do a fair amount of work on stuff, then they should be buying that program or whatever, working on people's, you know, that kind of thing, rather than be calling a dealer up and expecting them to spend three or four hours on the phone and try to figure it out. <clears throat> Now, it's it's not not much, I mean, these days yeah. you can't deal with it. It's available to third party. So, so independent repair shops, they can come yeah. by John Deere's yeah. version of it. And I think they can buy a case, same new Holland's. They, they don't have to be, have to be, have to be like, and all that to just buy that. No, if they come, they have a laptop that meets the system. specs. We can buy them a laptop. They can buy a customer service advisor and the EDL connection and buy. The, the right wires to hook up to the whole gamut of our so product. So they don't need John Deere Link and JD Link and all that. No, you own the JD Link. 
because it's tied to a control or a yeah. That's what I'm saying, but if they're going at it, it won't matter. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. That is a separate deal from customer service advice. And, and just real quick, when it comes into programming controllers, um, we just, you got to be careful when you're doing it. It's just like programming anything. And I mean, I got technicians who have been doing this for years and years and years and still have troubles with it. And we can, we can tend to get ourselves in trouble sometimes load software, if you know what I mean. You know, you download it, now your machine don't want to start, nothing comes on. Because we forgot a step where we didn't key cycle properly. So, you know, there's a, there's a lot of steps into doing that program in which we're just not, you know, we're, I wouldn't be, yeah, yeah. I mean, you could, you could, you could turn your machine off and it ain't never going to start again. So that's, uh, that's another thing. That process is going in, and that the reason that the right. is lost. Uh, I mean, the computer battery has died and caused those problems for us to get to deal with. There is a lot of hiccups that take place. And, and again, on the new products, um, you know, the AFS Connect, just like he, he was saying, I mean, that is a, a connected machine where if you give the dealer, the option to look at it, then they can get the codes, they can remote uh, tool into your into your screen for you and help you uh, troubleshoot through that way, make sure you're pushing the right buttons. We can do over the air transfers of software uh, through that, which would save you a trip, you know, with, with your technician. Yes, well, would, would you agree that, that, that in some cases, maybe a uh, question with a radiator You usually get a signal in and signal out, right? And if your signal ain't making it to it or making it out. But... Sometimes the controller gets false positive. It does, but <laughs> so then there is a component issue that's feeding an input or an output from that. Some of these equipments are like hundreds of dollars or more. Some of the sensors in the high pressure common fuel rail are, are expensive. Mm -hmm. so if, if the owner of Hardware uh, should also be called an ownership of software. We're not able to answer that. Right. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I can't answer that question. Uh, I understand if you were just saying Department of Justice may have to answer. Uh, I still am not sure where that is going. I'll, I'll be very honest. Yeah. Okay. So another just for the Ford bureaus have an extremely, I mean, over a hundred year legacy of farmers coming together in a group uh, for mutual benefit. So I use it as a preface to ask this question. What if, uh, let's say, a county farm bureau uh, wanted to purchase a the connection tool, the interface, mm -hmm. and the customer service tool with the board licenses, and offer that as a uh, as member benefit service to their members. I I have to read the end user license agreement that we are under from Deer that we need the customer to sign and. I don't, I don't have an answer for that. Uh, I know it's eight pages. I read it about four years ago before we started down this road. I don't know what's in the end user license agreement. One thing I will say to that, though, is it's not just as simple as pulling it up and starting to use it. You know, when, when you purchase that from a dealer, that dealer is going to come and help train you on how to use it. So it's not as simple as just hey, I bought the software and I'm just going to start using it today. There, there definitely is some training there. Um, yes. And so just to give it to somebody, I think we're just going to hand it around and everyone's just going to use it. It's going to work great. 
Right. You're going to have to work with the dealer uh, behind the start from, from the time you get your login uh, key to go in. They're going to show you how to get into the system, you know, the dealer portal, where to get that software download into your computer for the customer <laughs> EST. You got to make sure the computer's got the right specs for it so it takes it. So it's a, it's a lot of stuff to it. So that's something you have to work with with your dealer if, you, if you're going to go ahead and purchase it. Let's go ahead and move on. Maybe you want to talk about cases. Case is the same as, as the new one. Hello, everyone. I'm Matt Lamb. I'm the territory um, service rep for Kubota Tractor Corporation. Um, so basically, same as everybody else, you're going to hear a lot of repetitive here. Um, we have a, a consumer diagnostic program, uh, KOBD ACE, um, which allows for fault code retrieval. Um, you can monitor data from all the controllers. Um, you can do a scan of, of Weagle Wiggle test. So you can hook up to something, wiggle the connector to see if there's a fault there. Um, lose of loss of connection. Uh, you have access, limited access to diagnostic information. Um, you do have a few read write parameters. Um, there is a training mode that you can do without hooking to a machine um, to learn how to use it. Um, it's also a um, integrated um, help tool into it. Uh, and then you also have um, access to implement diagnostics through the ISO bus connector. Um, Fault code retrieval. You can retrieve fault codes, but you cannot erase them. Um, air codes are self-healing. So if you have a bad coolant sensor and you replace that coolant sensor, that code will go away the next time you cycle the key. Um, read write parameters. Um, there are very limited in that section. Um, it does not allow any access to any of the emissions uh, controlled components to read write those. Those. And also um, the codes that are not self-healing or emission tampering codes. So if there's any uh, tampering connect, um, detected with any of the emissions controlled sensors or components, it will throw a code, derate the engine to 50% and will not recover until it goes to a deal. Um, un unfortunately, yes, it is. Um, and, and that has happened, unfortunately. Um, other service materials available with every Kubota purchased, um, you, uh, every Kubota customer has a, the right to download the um, My Kubota app. Um, you can enter your machine information, um, whether it's one or 50 machines. Um, that'll give you access to the operator's manual and also a few helpful tints on, on basic maintenance parameters. Um, also, your operator's manual will be included in that. Um, you'll get a paper copy with the machine, of course, but you can also have it in a digital copy on your My Kubota app, or you can purchase it through KubotaUSA.com, which also has parts di diagrams available through there as well. Um, diagnostic and repair manuals can be bought from the local dealer. Um, that's, it's been that way for as long as I can remember. And then um, also special tools can be purchased through the dealer as well. Um, I, I will say this um, to your question about flashing the ECU, our ECUs are preloaded. When you buy them over the counter, they are already loaded with the software in them. Well, I, I'm, I'm not gonna twist anybody's arm. <laughs> um, that's all I have for Kubota. So if anybody has any questions on anything there, um, like I said, we're all, we all pretty much have a lot of the same uh, tools and stuff available. So oh, now I'll turn it over to the gentleman from ICO. Yeah, yeah, I'm just getting caught up to my slides. 
All right. Uh, so yeah, I'm Jack Sebring with uh, Agco Corporation, uh, which would cover the uh, the Fent Challenger and Massey Ferguson brands. And uh, yeah, um, just a quick cover on this slide here. Um, you know, I'd like to point out just uh, you know we've got a site name up there on the top for references if you'd like it. Uh, AgcoCorp.com. And uh, and within that, that'll uh, lead you to some uh, further discussion on. Uh, a wide range of our sources about right to repair some of the publication orderings, uh, you know, which is agco pubs, yeah, agcopubs.com. And uh, yeah, and, and other product information guides um, that are available to you through the public. Um, and within the, uh, um, our diagnostic tool, oh, I thought I got that, nope, okay there. Our diagnostic tool, um, Tech Connect Diagnostics uh, customer version. So uh, what, what I have uh, listed up here, um, so you got a little picture of the kit that we offer. So rather than delivering software, uh, we offer a kit rental. Um, and that way we can move past any uh, concerns about, uh, you know, uh, is your is your computer compatible? Which version of Windows do you have? Um, is your web browser up to date? Um, so we can help alleviate some of those concerns once you get our tool and we know that it's a, a tool that's gonna be working properly for you. And uh, so that, and that, that tool will come in a, a kit complete to connect to machinery for Tech Connect uh, uh, machines. Yeah, it'll come with all the equipment you need. Um, uh, I got in the lower right corner there, the rental process. So um, if you want this tool, it would be uh, getting in contact with your Agco dealer um, and setting up a rental program, um, initial two week program. Um, and it can also be extended on that initial order as well for as long as that you want it. And, uh, and then you should receive that kit within two days. Um, and then, um, and then you should also receive some uh, training videos automatically once you place that order. And then the dealer can also support you with uh, further information uh, that you might questions you have about the uh, about that that the videos didn't cover. Um, and then of course it comes with the uh, enclosed return shipping labels. So with our uh, with our functionality um, with the tool, it does come with the uh, the workshop manuals operators, quick start guides. Um, you can work on multiple uh, machinery, uh, multiple VIN numbers there. So not it's just not to what, what one machine that you want to order it for, but uh, multiple equipment. Um, you can view diagnostic information of the fault codes and, and fault code information. Uh, get that subassembly details of your machine based on that VIN number. Um, checking the network scans and doing diagnostic functions has those capabilities, a lot of those same cap capabilities of the dealers. And, um, and with that, you can also uh, some calibrations if you've replaced some of the components and clear fault codes. Um, and then to the far right, there's is just kind of a, a fictional diagram of connecting to the machine there. And then uh, I just wanted to touch real quick here on um, yeah, advancing technologies as well. And um, I really wanted to stress some of the, uh, the importance of um, yeah, data privacy. Um, with Agco, you do select and choose your level of data that you would share with us. Um, and by default, it would be none. So if you want us to help support with our machine monitoring efforts, with you, that would be something that you would select up. Um, otherwise, it's considered private. Uh, but uh, yeah, um, and we also have our. I wanted to point out the uh, the website on the top. Um, it's uh, FuseSmartFarming.com, where you can see our our range of uh, support applications uh, programs that you can. Uh, use in your fleet management and supporting your equipment. And then, questions, yeah. Any, yeah, any specific questions? What's typically the rental? Uh, 
Yep. Uh, Simon, can you help out with that one? Okay. And just so everybody has it on online too, a uh, question was the cost of the uh, kit, well, the initial rental fee 200, or the initial two week rental was uh, approximately $550. And uh, there would be another deposit, but that is returned when uh, when the kit is returned. Uh, but uh, and then for the additional weeks, it depends on your increment of uh, your how how long you extend that. Uh, not sure what that what that value would be, but it would change based on how long you want it. Now, do you have a, uh, you have an option? As far as I'm aware, the, 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 yeah, it's only rental only. Yes. Where, where would a farmer or uh, plant to sell from a rent from the dealer? Yeah, correct. Um, yeah, uh, renting this and gaining access, yeah, through your local dealer um, that you got your equipment from would be the, the best route to go with. Uh, uh, with that, uh, when you rent that equipment, it would be licensed under the same equipment codes that that dealer has. So what that dealer has for, um, you know, let, let's say if it was a Massey Ferguson dealer, um, he's going to have the Massey Ferguson's uh, um, access to it. If it's a Fent dealer, he's going to have the Fent access to it. So, um, so if you're a Fent customer and, and uh, you went to a Massey dealer, um, you're not going to be happy. You know, you're going to get the wrong, uh, wrong diagnostic tool. Just, just to clarify that, that doesn't the kit, you go to the dealer and you order the kit, the kit is then shipped to you. Yeah, it doesn't, you don't yeah. come out of the dealership with the kit. Because we want to make sure you've got a good, clean tool that's, that's re-imaged every time you receive it. Yeah, yeah, you get, you get a return label with the kit, but Yes, in the back. If we're going to rent this equipment, we have to have your mechanic come out. Is he going to be specialized on that piece of equipment to use that computer? He got to wait for the money because most time when they come out, they got to go look at anyway. They don't know what to do on it. That's my question. Is what, it's almost a waste of money. It's going to have strange. I know exactly how to do it. We have John here to boot it, and we have Casey and Ashley too. So if you come out there, they have to come cook it anyway. So you don't save any money. Not specialized, that data is no good to us. Yeah, so the uh, question was the uh, uh, concerns about. So, yeah, so our, our service training departments does provide training to two of our dealer technicians. What is it? Just for that piece of equipment. You have to be specialized at every line. The guys that come up to us service everything. Mm -hmm. Everything. Yep. So we have to train them every time. And if they don't know what to do, they have to go find a different program that takes them to the, you're going to lose your $2,400 if it makes you guys charge. The dealer would already have the tool. So you would have to buy it. No, it's not. It brings it out. talking multiple lines are you wanting a technician that can operate all these different tools or you got 8400 and you got a combine and you got patients you got a john deere combine and case international combine but when they come out they still got to use the same tool but they just don't come out to flip it they got to get this program anyway 
Yes, it is there. It is our standard tool that we issue to our types. But the, does this guy just do combine? I understand your question, and with the fifteen stores, no. I can't answer that question. I can answer for you. No. Most of them, yes. I'm going to say all of them. You, I, I don't know what you've experienced. Well, you can tell it's not very good. I, I can. <laughs> it's, it's it's very concerning. Yes. I, I hear you in your voice. <laughs> I get excited with, but it's not that bad. But for all that money, it takes too long to figure out what the hell is going on. Uh, any other questions before to wrap up? Yeah. All right. So I, I think you know that's kind of an accurate description of the frustration that we are we are grappling on our end, right? And it, and it's not that. Um, it's not that we think equipment manufacturers are bad people, you know, that we don't want to deal with them. But the problem is, is that nearly everyone has had a bad experience with a dealer or a dealer technician and had that quote on the job training experience at a rate of $120 an hour plus mileage both ways, plus a service charge, plus consumables charge. Okay. And the pressure we're getting is there's no there's no other options in this marketplace, no full service options, let's let's say. And and in fact, in, in parts of Maryland, they're they're very well are very poorly covered for service like this. So these guys are gonna have higher road service charges in. So that's kind of where we're coming from. Again, it's not an attack on you guys personally or who you represent, it's just we're trying to find more solutions for our members to adequately get their crops in or out of the community. I understand. Okay. Technology has evolved to the point now that when your own tech come out, the first thing they're going to do is take a laptop and that piece of equipment, no matter what it is. I mean, I mean that's where technology is. Without the ability to do that, they know exactly what's going on. Well, whether they can fix it or not, that's the first thing they're going to do is hook it up. It is. It's the direct path to the diagnostics. Right. That's first with, thing with code. Do, do you guys, do they offer any of these trackers without all that neat, you know, all that computer stuff on them anymore? No, <laughs> 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 sorry, not. <laughs> So, yes. so I wanted to allude to the gentleman who talked about a bill coming before the legislature, and it's put in by the gaming people and the cell phone people, and they want to drag ag and our right to repair in it. And what they want to do in this bill is they want the source code that all your companies own that supply to your dealers. And I think what we need to do as Farm Bureau is to realize there's two parts to this. And that when it comes to the legislative side, we need to protect the source codes and we need to pull that part away from the other part. Is, and I think you alluded to that, yeah, but, but I think this is the real, um, the real realization of what's really happening and and it coming to Maryland put Maryland liberal and they feel like they got the chance to get it in. And uh they gotta start somewhere. And they gotta start somewhere. Exactly right. So so I would ask you guys if this is the case and they're after these source codes, we need you all to back for us with and we're asking for your help. I'm gonna honestly say that is that the right approach? That's correct. So you're you're correct in your statement that they're actually not targeting most most of ag is roped in with the group that's actually targeting apple and Microsoft. Yep. and and so they want to use us as a as a stakeholder to say yes we want, we want access to these tools but they're not actually seeking to benefit us in fact they they might harm us now there's some things going on throughout the world the eu just ruled uh that apple had to give up their source code so the, the trend worldwide is that right to repair is going to be the right to consumer. Eventually, we're going to be able to flash. 
but there's bad things that come with that. So what we as Farm Bureau need to try to do is avoid what we would otherwise consider to be a bad bill, right? A bill that would allow someone access to something they shouldn't have. Um, there's a large leap between a cell phone and combines large <laughs> tractors. I, I mean, the, the legislation just probably is not going to be good legislation for a thousand dollar cell phone and a brand new car. Uh, it's it, it's th there's a huge gap there. Exactly. Now, just on the flip side of that, the frustration that we hear is when statements are made like, "Well, we can't do that because of EPA regulation." That members have trouble with that, and and they're they leave with the idea, "Well, if cell phones go down with them, y'all go." That's you know that's the sentiment. So on our side, we are we're really looking for shows of good faith, um, and and you know, we've explored some options to try to develop better bills that we have for them. But um, yeah, we're in this industry together, and that includes you guys, and, and we don't necessarily want anybody to harm you. But you know, it's just it's it's got to be a team effort. Uh, so that's kind of where I mean, your members are our customers. I mean, there's. It, it's connected, absolutely. Uh, what you, from what you, from what you presented today, uh, that's better. Well, last time it was simply to have another one. There was no way to come to a better. I've only been involved about 12 months. I mean, I don't know what was before. I mean, I, I stand here in the middle. Okay. So, so I'm going to get Kevin out of the middle here in a second because since I represent the dealers in the state of Maryland, I think everybody knows that our dealers and who people I represent and you guys that worked with them many years out here, and you're exactly right, they're not perfect. And they're just like everybody else. There are times where they could be perfect when they come out and do service jobs like that gentleman's filtration back there. And unfortunately, there's always somebody when you're trying to get them up and get them running, you send the person that you got out there to go do the job. And you guys are what we call a captive audience. These guys service agricultural equipment and nothing else. So if they make you mad, they're well aware out there that they may not get a shot at you again or you're going to go to a different color that they currently have today. And I will tell you that, you know, we have, I've been doing this now for about three years over here with the bills that come through. And quite honestly, we are working. We're not, we hear you. We're trying to come up with a solution that's going to make everybody happy. And you said it back there, we're making progress. We're not running yet, but we're slowly walking to get there. So didn't mean to cut you off. Yep, we really do. We, you guys, have no understanding how much we appreciate the dialogue, and you got people here that know this stuff inside and out, and we're here to try to come to everybody and make everybody smiling by the end of the day. We got about 10 after five and I've been around long enough to know that you have a cocktail reception in 35 minutes and I'm not standing in front of that. Everybody have a good holiday. <laughs>